Folks, Thursday night, welcome aboard. Time for Murder Hobo Week, Cacophony Edition. We're down one player so far, uh, so that may or may not be a detriment to these guys. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this campaign started off uh, 40 some episodes ago and uh, is coming to its natural conclusion. So uh, you're right here at the tail end. All the other old episodes are available in our archive, either visually on YouTube or just audio only on Podbean. So don't forget to follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube account. Uh, if you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. Carol will be very happy. Uh, and if you want to buy any of our weird crap, like our cool shirts and stuff like that, phone case, a duvet cover, bullshit, whatever, uh, link is down there. Uh, most importantly, if you want to be on a one-shot like this Saturday or on the talk show on Tuesdays, mhobo Inc., Twitter, or Gmail, hit us up. We will get you on there. We'd like to thank Pirate Dog Dice for dice that don't suck and can be fully customized. So if you're looking for custom mm -hmm. dice, uh, check out at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Uh, let them know what you want. Uh, they'll either tell you, yeah, they can do that or no, they can't. Uh, either or. And don't forget if your game stinks, or it smells like success, so it's hard for us to judge, uh, try a little bit of adventure sense in your life from oddfishgames.com. They'll make any game uh, get all classed up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> they also make the Shine System. So if you want to write much more gooder than me, pick up the Shine System. It'll help you out step by step. Uh, also, don't forget their Kickstarter for How RPG with Their Cats. I've played it. It was fun. Uh, is going live soon. Keep an eye out for those notices. Last but certainly not least, if you're going to Gen Con and you have an hour or two downtime and you want to make a little cash or uh, pick up a little free swag, uh, oddfishgames.com can use a hand, uh, man in their booth. Uh, so, you know, take a look at that if you can. Folks, like I said, this is Cacophony. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, we will introduce you to the two players who are now eight level. Uh, these guys are true certified heroes, if you will. Uh, first off, David, who are you? Who do you play? Hi, I'm David, and uh, yeah, you can find me here on Murder Hobo on Tuesdays, mostly, uh, for Between the Rolls, and you can also uh, catch me in the Calamity campaign. Hey, there's two sides of it, so yeah, I'll play Yngwie in one, and yeah, Crow in the other, and God, I'm on the swan song of Zadar. Hopefully it's not a literal swan song. Uh, but yeah, so um, you never know. Uh, pop up in one shots, and you just never know where I'll turn up. So, You know, with Caitlin gone, I'm going to have to kill somebody, so... Uh, kill, no. 50, kill her! 50 shot. <laughs> Uh, last but certainly not least, normally behind the camera tonight, she is, of course, in front and behind the camera, my wife, Carrie. Carrie, who are you? Who are you playing? Uh, I am playing Camille, a necromancing wizard halfling, and she is still nursing a bit of a broken heart from being, well, she wasn't dumped, but her... She was disappointed. Disappointed <laughs> in Ulrich the Stinky. She can't divide or she won't accept divided attentions from anyone so she's better he's, than that he's okay. just a gigolo <laughs> how can you possibly be heartbroken over that skank of a human being he could gnaw on a haunch it was just magnificent and he smelled great <laughs> exactly. smelled great eating a haunch there you go <laughs> He had that real barbaric attitude about it. Folks, last time these guys made a sea crossing to get away from Frecklin, a.k.a. the frozen death of them, nearly. Uh, mm -hmm. They flew low, flew slow, uh, along with their pilot and uh, guide, shall we say. Uh, Aerosmith? Aerosmith, a, thank you. I, yeah. I don't know why yeah. that name always escapes me. Uh, he has brought uh, Suki the Witch with him uh, from Frecklin. During their trip, they uh, discovered a Minotaur vessel. And during further exploration, they discovered the Minotaurs were headed to deliver a package for Dibble Thibbet. You Dibble it, he'll Thibble it. Uh, over uh -huh. to Mortimer J. Sneed at the Grand Academy, which is where these guys are. 
you might remember multiple episodes before, uh, even before the Cloud Giants, they were in Telosia and found most likely cursed artifact. And they're hoping that Mortimer J. Sneed, the smartest man that they know, can assist them with that when they arrive. And the sluttiest at, man they know. He is a himbo. Is he? But he, is he, Camille? You he, met somebody else. Well, at least he's in a committed relationship with the five. I was about to say, five committed relationships. I, uh, when they arrived at the Grand Academy-ish, uh, Mortimer was not present, but a flash of light, a whiff of brimstone, and uh, Mortimer, an unknown male, and of course, Zephyr Zubak, uh, arrived out of the mists. Clearly, Mortimer has been tinkering in time travel yet again. All, all three suffered injuries. Uh, the Minotaur captain was up at the uh, barracks, so to speak, the dormitory, waiting for Mortimer. Uh, we rejoined the group as uh, Mortimer makes sure that the acolytes of the college take away his two injured counterparts pointing out that he will join them shortly. Uh, as he wipes strange blue dirt off his tunic, uh, he comes up and robustly hugs both of you. My friends, it has been so long. Uh, both of you roll perception. perception. This will be for a smell. Oh, boy. A smell? Oh, man, that's never good. <laughs> Twelve. Oh, uh... Perception for Zadar? Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure he smells it. Let's see. That's 17. <laughs> Both of you smell an acrid scent that you've never smelled before. Uh, and it's turned his cloak a little bit greenish in some spots. Have you traveled to hell recently? Why do you smell that way? Oh, it's a wonderful thing. Licks his thumb, rubs on the stain. Hmm rubs a different stain and holds his thumb out for you to taste it. Oh. Uh, I'll pass. We'll pass. The natives called it lime. Lime. Okay. Yeah. It's huh. very good. Uh, but those elves, they're just <laughs> they're just strange. So, no senses of humor either. <laughs> so. Well, truth be told, I was dictating the terms of their agreement. Uh... Didn't work out. I, I went. I went back in time. Uh, and, of course, uh, you did. And met with some of the elves. Uh, but fortunately, uh, that's why we have peace these days. <laughs> so everything worked out in the end. Um, he is injured. He is bleeding. Oh. Uh, uh, Zephyr was bleeding, and so was the other male. Are you so. guys going to be okay? Uh... Is there oh. an infirmary here? Uh, oh, oh yes. Uh, we, we have an excellent cleric, actually, uh, from the Southlands. His name is Aeole. Uh, he's a bird, one of those bird men creatures. He's an Aarakocra. Mm. Ah, okay. Yes, he will patch them up and I will go see them. My friends, you look good. You look potent. You look very strong. Uh, you guys notice that Mortimer is looking old. Uh, much older than he was when you last met with him in Cacophony. Uh, okay. the, the lines around his eyes are deep, uh, furrows on his brow. He's got a lot of gray and white hair starting to pepper in. Mortimer, how much time travel have you been doing? <laughs> they're, uh, they're, uh, I'm working on a project, so I had to do quite a few trips. Uh, and I think it's really starting to take a toll on me. Uh, yes, it, it looks like it. Did you stay too long in one of them? I mean... Uh, no, I just... Uh, there's a uh, there's a rather uh, heinous project that I've been working on, and it's required a lot of uh, investigation. And unfortunately, while our library is, is, is quite robust, um, uh, I needed to dip my hands into the pool of time to find out some things and uh seems like that's kind of stolen a bit of your life away yeah oh yeah uh he seems distracted okay 
Did you encounter something? Like, hey, uh, and he, he reaches into his tunic and he pulls out, and there's there's a rather substantial amount of blood. And he goes, "I, my friends, I, I'm afraid." Uh, Perhaps we should go to the infirmary now. Yeah, I I'll think, help uh, him to the infirmary. <laughs> uh, you notice he's a little bit unsteady on his feet. Uh, yeah, Zadar helps and grabs him. <laughs> yeah, he peppers you with a bunch of questions. The rest of the acolytes fall in behind you. Uh, they seem somewhat concerned of his condition. Uh, as you guys kind of limp your way up, uh, there are multiple structures here, uh, all of them made of wood. Uh, there's trees throughout this small island, uh, but it appears as though they have been utilized to go ahead and make several buildings here. You also notice that there are masons constructing a very large rectangle on the property. Uh, the, from the dock area, you go up a kind of a harsh rise uh, to where the smattering of buildings are. You notice no points of defense here, no standing military, no armed guards as well. Uh, both of you give me arcana checks, please. Uh, 21. 14. Uh, you both know that uh, the school itself is considered neutral territory. Uh, it is used by multiple races for the benefit of all mankind. Uh, so uh, reason, reasonably thinking, uh, you would not anticipate any problems. Of course, you've just been traveling with Minotaur pirates. So there is that question. Uh, as you guys reach the top of the rise, uh, uh, one of those days, man. No, what, David, what's your character's name? Zadar. Zadar. That's right. Uh, Zadar, <laughs> uh, give me a strength check because he's getting kind of heavy. Okay. Uh, let's see. Strength it is uh, not bad. 18. You feel him lean heavily on you, and you can feel the blood leaking out of his side, and it smears down your outfit. Oh, this is not good. Uh, the Minotaur comes out. The Captain Minotaur with the peg leg comes up, and he goes, I use need. Uh, uh, wait, wait. We need your help. Can you carry him? Uh, I am Sneed. I am Mortimer J. Sneed. I... Shut up, Mortimer. I, I am... And he acquiesces because he passes out. Oh, God. The yeah. blood has turned yellow. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, we need to get this man to the clerk. Uh, Captain Del Rio uh, scoops him up without one ounce of issue uh, and says, where? Where do I go? Where do I go? And the acolytes all charge past you elbowing you as they go past follow us uh they lead you not into the main building but into a different building uh when you get in there captain montrose will enter first it is <clears throat> for lack of a better term a mash unit uh it is a small drafty building it's got four beds two of which are occupied by zephyr uh and the other male the uh, Eric Cockra is working feverishly on both. He has two halfling nurses, one male, one female, assisting him as he screeches out orders. Uh, he seems to be in quite a bit of distress as well. Give me a perception check. Oh. 16. Um, perception of uh, 14. Uh, Zadar, you don't notice it because of the flapping of the wings. Uh, Camille, you notice that uh, Zephyr is not doing so hot, and she has kind of a streak of white hair down her temple. It would appear as though she has been on a few trips to the past as well. Uh, as Mortimer is brought in, uh, uh, Aole moves his attention completely over to your friend and begins to work feverishly on him. Uh, dips his feathers into the yellow goo. 
uh, starts barking out orders uh, in his own language, and everybody starts to do this because they do not speak Aarakocra. One of the acolytes leans in, also an Aarakocra, looks like a cardinal, uh, and uh, and flies away. Uh, the cleric orders everybody out. Wait, can I help? You cannot. Get out. Okay. Is he going to so... be okay? I do not know. When can okay. we come back? I will send for you. Now go. Go. Your your breath is probably damaging this man. As you know, you Zadar's could be fried leaving <laughs> the room with, with Camille in tow, he waves his hand and casts his copper hand languages. And he's going to listen by the door on the other side. Sure. Captain uh, Del Rio is outside. Uh, he will stay for about eight minutes and he'll decide. Oh, don't know. Don't see the cardinal. Uh, and he heads back in, uh, presumably to go get food and drink. Uh, you guys will wait. Uh, you know what, Zadar? You have shitty rolls. Why don't you roll a d6? <laughs> you mean, Dave, Dave, you have shitty rolls. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, eh, not great. Three. <laughs> Three days pass. Oh, fuck. Uh, good thing I didn't roll a six. <laughs> that, yeah. is my, that is Dave's luck. <laughs> uh, you guys have been given... Uh, temporary lodging it's not great um uh, but it's it, it's out of the weather and we've it, had it, worse you you've definitely had worse uh you're served three squares a day uh you know you guys can wander around you have three days uh what would you like to do in these three days uh, these three days i just <clears throat> um has zephyr recovered or the other uh, Acolyte? Mm -mm. Okay. There's been no word from uh, the MASH unit. The MASH unit. Okay. Well, we still have to try to figure out a way to secure this thing that we have, so is there anybody uh, else here that we can talk to? I was going to ask an Acolyte, is there someone like a like a second uh, that, you know, or, you know, deputy whatever you know, Head Mortimer master, is blah blah. Uh, Mortimer is not the master of the academy. Oh, he's not. Well, no. Who okay. is the master? Uh, the master is Semp. She um, is in her office. Uh, well, would... can we go talk to her? <clears throat> if she is not busy, you may. Uh, okay. This this acolyte will be human. Okay, uh, but but a swarthy kind of Greek look about him, and it is a uh, male. Oh, okay. Well, I say, well, we'll formally petition to see Seth. I am Richie. Uh, you may. I I will stick by you and assist you if you are friends of Professor Sneed, uh, and I will go talk to Semp to see if. Uh, the mistress has time to see you. She will have time to see you, but not till day three. Okay. Wow. Okay. Dice giveth, dice taketh away. <laughs> uh, your first day has been kind of harrowing, so you guys can go ahead. Richie will show you around. Maybe Potsy and Mouth will come by. I was about to say, <laughs> <laughs> when's the, the rest of the Happy Days gang getting here? <laughs> yeah, at least it wasn't Steve. So, uh, but Richie will show you around. You will be given your quarters. Uh, however, there is a problem, and it will be addressed to Odd Camille Even Zadar. 14. Uh, Zadar, Aerosmith, and Suki. Uh, come up to you at the end of day one, uh, and they ask how Mortimer is doing. And I, I, I tell, we don't know. It was pretty dire. <laughs> I uh, we still haven't heard anything. 
I, 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 I have a problem, uh, and I hate to do this to you under extraordinary circumstances, but uh, I must leave. Okay. So I, 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 I hope that Professor Sneed is okay, but uh, you have the ship with the Minotaur. Uh, I, I, I wish I could stay, but I, I have to go. Mm -hmm. You've I understand. <laughs> gone above and beyond. Is Suki going with you? Suki is going with me. Uh, she is going to uh, visit her family. Her grandmother is dying. Uh, she lives on Sedellus. Brown chicken, so, brown cow. That. She is uh, what they call a seer in ah. this land. Uh, yes. and, and Suki needs to go see how she is doing. That's understandable. I, I will try and make it back in the event that you want to return to cacophony uh no but be best of travels my friends uh i hope you do well uh after he leaves uh you can tell there's a few individuals gnomes in particular uh taking almost blueprints or schematics of uh, the vessel uh and one in particular seems to be taking a copious amount of notes in a rather large tome. Uh, he works feverishly to try and get a few of his questions answered uh, before Aerosmith and Suki bid you a fond farewell as they go up, up into the sky and head south. Uh, day one will end uneventfully. Richie has secured you extra clothes uh, in the event that you need some. Bonus. Anything anything that you had on the uh, airship has been left behind uh aerosmith's not a thief uh he will dump he will dump all your stuff there but <laughs> day one passes uneventfully day two is there anything you guys would like to do i have any coffee here yeah where we need coffee um man my mind shot what's the name of a Place. Now, what, uh, where would you go? What's another name for mess hall? Mess hall, a canteen. Cantina? Yeah, we can do cantina. Uh, All right. can, the cantina where the meals are served, your meals mm -hmm. were brought to you. Uh, however, it, it is a long mess hall. Uh, it is wood. It looks more like a Viking longhouse. Uh, and three times a day, the acolytes. Uh, come to meet they sit in silence uh which is kind of strange to you guys yeah. uh and, and when you attempt to speak to anyone if you do uh it is always in a very hushed and reverent tone uh you can see at the head of the table is an elderly but stately woman uh probably uh barbara bush no, who was uh, on uh, the Big Valley? Oh, Stanwyck, oh. Barbara Stanwyck. Barbara there Stanwyck. There, Barbara there you Stanwyck. go. Very nice. Yeah. Boy, so, we're um, showing our age here, folks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you got the old crew here today, folks. Uh, yeah, if Caitlin were here, she'd be like, "Who the fuck is what? Barbara Stanwyck?" Yeah. Um, but Barbara Stanwyck is at the end. Give me an insight rolls at advantage. <laughs> Miss Kitty going to set us up in the bunkhouse. <laughs> As long as James Arnett is around. What is it we're, we're rolling again? Insight at advantage. Insight at advantage. Okay. Uh, 14. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, 18. <laughs> 21. Uh, Zadar, you are pretty sure uh, that's Semp. The okay. uh, head. Uh, Camille, you can assume that. Um, She's very stately, sits at the top of the table. Uh, like I said, she is human, but she's I kind of a short human. Elbows are and like, I don't want to get on her bad side. She looks uh, I don't, She looks like the honcho here. So. She, and, and she's got resting bitch face 100% of the time. So, sure. uh, But you can tell, Zadar, you can tell because you had a high enough role. Uh, there is a hint of concern in her face. Okay. Uh, after the meal ends on day two, 
she makes a beeline for the mash uh, area and she enters with impudence because uh, of course she's boss lady. Uh, you guys can hang around outside. Uh, Richie can tell you that uh, there has been little change in uh, Professor Sneed. However, Zephyr and Garignon uh, appear to be on the mend and may be uh, out and about soon. Okay. Uh, if, um, or Camille, do you think we should follow to the infirmary? I know they're not going to let us in, but we might be able to I guess gather we some information. Drop on the outside. Yeah. Uh, Zadar will cast Comprehend Languages again. Sure. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, D12 against me. Let's see how thin the walls are. Okay. It's a mash unit, it's a tent. Eleven. <laughs> Oh, you rolled an 11? That yep. sucks, because I rolled a 12. It is not not 12, too. <laughs> oh. I wish 12. <laughs> 12 would have been great. Uh, yeah, the walls are a little bit... Too thick. You can hear murmuring in common. Uh, mm -hmm. You hear things like, too soon to call, mm -hmm. uh, unexpected toxin, da-da-da-da-da-da. Um, on the evening of... Or it, you know what? Let me figure this one out. Okay. <laughs> Okay, in the afternoon, uh, you meet two individuals. Uh, a Captain uh, Del Rio asks uh -huh. how uh, Sneed is doing. Uh, his people are kind of itching to get going. Uh, he has relegated the crew to the ship because Minotaur are scary, and no Minotaur uh, ever comes no to the academy. No Minotaur Steve. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, Minotaur do not go to the Grand Academy. Something to tuck away. Uh, okay. But uh, he has relegated the crew there. They are fishing for the most okay. part. They're bored shitless. Uh, but I'm he sure. inquires as to how Sneed is doing. Uh, Zadar tells him that I, I, I think it's still pretty dire. Um, one of the things that I could overhear in any conversation too soon to tell something like that so well, that is unfortunate i will continue to hang on to the package uh but we uh <clears throat> we will be setting out shortly after the package is delivered my friends uh best of luck to your friend we can hold Thank on you. to the package for you i am uh, honor bound by dibble fibbit to hang on to it okay. and hand deliver it I have we, we understand dibble so d yes. d despite his diminutive frame dibble fibbit is Quite a dangerous he individual. He can be an asshole. Yeah. And, and an asshole. Uh, the other person that you run into in the afternoon is the gnome. Uh, and he comes up to you. He has a tome about yay thick. It looks like the New York uh, yellow pages. And he asks you What's if. What's that? What are yellow pages? <laughs> yeah. Like eight iPhones stacked together <laughs> with just as much information. Uh, he asks you if you were friends uh, with uh, Mortimer Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Yes. Fuck am I not remember? Apparently so. <laughs> uh, I, I'm writing it down just to be. It was a long day. Uh, yeah. He, he asks if you are friends with Master Smith. Yes. Yes, we are friends with Master. Are Smith. you in, and he'll cut you off at every chance he gets. Are you familiar with how the contraption he calls an airship works? Uh, pretty much. Sorry, um, yeah. So, uh, uh, in a scale of one to ten, how would you go ahead and describe uh, the ease of its construction? I have no idea. Or were you there for that? No. Uh, no. Well, Probably you're, you're almost I, of no use to me then. Well, then take a hike, asshole. E ease of construction, e yeah, ten being more difficult. Probably about a ten. <laughs> so, how is it operated? With air. This is for scientific purposes. With hot air, uh, heated. Which how you should be able to produce heated? a lot of. Uh, from the heating elements that are installed on what the were the heating itself. elements constructed of and how were they fashioned he's not paying as attention to me as far as i could tell they were probably magical in construction out of his ass 
something that could instantaneously combust and produce heat. Like your ass. <laughs> you have a fixation with my ass, my mm, dear. You're just an ass. This is my, a gnome talking to a gnome. <laughs> so. my, name, my name is Dexter, not ass. <laughs> Dexter. Dexter Docamel. Oh my god. Dexter Docamel. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Dexter. I wish I could say the same, but you have given me very little to work with. But I appreciate your time nonetheless. Um, I must I have go. a question. Yes. Are you married? Yes. Do Why? You, do you have children? Uh, my wife is expecting her first child. I am here on temporary loan currently on sabbatical from uh the great library awesome um that's not what the name of it is though other questions no, I, I, I wish I, your wife well she has a lot ahead of her i'm kind of familiar with libraries and stuff like that hmm. may i suggest if the you have a child maybe the name dewey might Sounds like a good name. Sounds like a stupid name. Oh. Let besides, your wife decide. Besides, the the name has already been chosen. Oh, okay. Oh. And what will that be? Dietrich. Dietrich. Okay, yeah, that's a respectable name. Interesting. Thank you. I was hoping for your approval. <laughs> Can I kick him now? You may kick him if you want. No, I won't. I'll refrain. Cool. Yes, I, I should have asked. Uh, Dexter, are you on the spectrum? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Nathap, that's the library. Uh, no, I am not on any spectrum. Just asking. Well, if you have any more questions about the craft, come see us. Thank you. You've been an abundance of information so far. Maybe I will later. And you've uh, been a gracious person uh the evening uh is unusually clear and crisp uh a little bit on the warm side considering that you're still kind of in the throes of winter uh but there seems to be a gathering of a certain select group of acolytes uh forming up in what would be considered a parade grounds uh centrally located among the buildings Okay. Let's go see oh. what's going on. Yeah. Uh, the, the group is composed of multiple um, races, uh, all shapes and sizes. Uh, no minotaurs, except for Captain Del Rio, who is also curious as to what's going on. They seem uh -huh. to be erecting something made of wood and straw. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hey, psst, what's going on? uh captain mon or captain del rio has no idea what's going on okay so i poke an acolyte in front of me what's going on we are preparing for the festival for tomorrow what is the festival about i'm kind of busy here um richie uh could you explain to them what's going on richie the acolyte comes up behind you and he goes my friends i would have thought you would have been in bed by now we're not infants. It is late at night, and we are at the Grand Academy, so there's not that much to do. Did you have a question about something? Yes. What is this? What is this festival about? Oh, this is a Dratic festival. Uh, they call it uh, uh, Flaming Man, I believe. <laughs> Flaming Man. It. All right. There we go. Uh, they All build right. a, a, an effigy, and then they light it on fire and dance around. Uh, while eating uh, these voracious uh, mushrooms. It's, wow. it's a little bit on the different side, but like I said, I, I, I am not a member of the Jurassic Arts. I am a fighter by trade. Is there a purpose to this festival? Are they honoring someone, or is it just for fun? I think it is just for fun. Uh, they will be, uh, what is the term, hung over for a few days. The mushrooms are... Not to my liking, but if you would like to mm. engage in the festival, it's at first light in the morning. Uh, I'll just watch. It's fine. Some people <laughs> enjoy it. Some do not. 
uh, is there anything else I can do before I retire for the week? Do you have any word about Mortimer? None, but Zephyr should be uh, excused at first light as well. Oh, awesome. oh that's, so will, that's great. So news. will Professor Grignon. Um, and where are their quarters at? Uh, they are over there. Uh, it would be across from the dormitory that you guys share with the acolytes. Uh, it's a smaller structure. Uh, consider it uh, more of an apartment building, but for staff. So I go to Zadar and I'm like, eh, tomorrow morning we're going over there. Yeah, that's the RA section. <laughs> the right. resident assistants. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, you guys going to go to bed then? Uh, yeah, we might as well turn in or something. Yeah, there's no movie theater here yet. Yeah. Day, day three begins. rain <laughs> of course <laughs> uh, you guys wake up at first light along with everybody else uh, as you head towards uh, grub you notice that the druidic cultures are headed out towards the open air uh, it's gonna be hard to get that thing on fire <laughs> uh, you see them gathered around uh, they have little bowls with kind of uh, fabric covering them. Uh -huh. uh, one of them comes over to uh, Richie, who is in line ahead of you. And he, he points over to another area uh, to a female. Uh, and one of the acolytes goes over, uh, grabs the female and they head over towards the main area. Do you want to stay in line for grub or do you want to go see what they're doing? Why don't you hold our place in line to be able and I'll go take a look. I can do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, Richie leans back Camille and says, I, I think you're going to be very happy. I understand. Uh, Zephyr is inside along with Professor Garignon. So you might be able to get some answers today. Uh, Zadar, as you go over, you follow the other acolytes. They don't give two shits. Uh, mm -hmm. They're talking to the female, and it is a. Oh, it's an elf. Uh, she uh, nods in agreement. Whoosh, casts burning hands on this fucking thing. Mm -hmm. uh, who wants to D12 against me? Uh, yeah, Dave's rolls. I'm not thing. there, so. Ooh. Oh my. She cannot get the fucking thing lit at all. Mm. And the rain keeps coming. She tries again. Uh, the burning hands go out. The rain is just too much. Uh, shrugs her shoulders and cannot do anything. About that time, a very exhausted red bird lands. Oh, uh, and Zadar, you will recognize him as the Arakakra sent out by the medic. Mm -hmm. uh, he carries a pouch at, that kind of jingles and he fatiguely starts wandering over to the mash here. Okay. I I shadow behind. Mm. Uh, he'll, he'll go in, enter into the, uh, I don't know, dispensary, if you will. Uh, okay. Close uh, the door behind him. Okay. Uh, I'll post outside and cast Comprehend Languages again. Sure. Uh, D12 against me? <clears throat> Please roll better. <laughs> Three. Six. Uh, this time, uh, the door didn't latch very securely. The Aarakocker is speaking to each other, and he points out that he has located the items requested. Uh, you can hear the jingling of two glass jars, and the older Aarakocker, uh, Aole, will point out that he believes this is the right stuff. Uh, and that's how the Mercury 7 astronauts came to be. <laughs> 
Uh, it's inside uh, Camille, uh, you get a place. Are you going to get two plates, one for you and one for Zadar? Or Oka? Yes. Uh, the cooks look at you speculatively. I'm very hungry. I, I have a lot of growing to do. They aren't paid by the plate, so they don't give two shits. They give you two <laughs> platefuls. Uh, you and Richie sit down. Give me a perception check. this and I have to let the dog out because she's staring at me. Oh lord. Uh, 17. Fair enough. Uh, uh -huh. you, you spot Zephyr and this Professor Grignon. They are sitting up at the head of the table with Semp. Uh, Semp seems to be back and forth. Give me an insight check. five you have no idea you notice that it looks intense can i go up there uh as you rise richie asks you what you're doing i want to go talk to zephyr real quick oh that is not a wise move why is that she holds audience with simp simp wants to know what is going on and simp is not happy I don't care. I run up to her and I tackle her with a hug. Uh, her frail body, let's see. Well, how. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, with a four, you crash her into Semp. <laughs> oh. I say, Zephyr, I'm so glad that you're okay. I've been uh, so worried as, about you. As you do so, you are levitated up into the air along with Zephyr, unable to control uh richie comes up under you <laughs> don't uh, be looking up my skirts uh, asshole mistress Semp, may i present to you one of professor sneed's friends uh they are here uh, on a very urgent mission with the minotaur Semp uh just stares daggers through you uh does this and you and zephyr kind of come down uh zephyr kind of steadies herself kind of rearranges a robe uh and offers apologies to semp uh she points out semp uh may i introduce to you uh, a friend a very good friend of professor sneeds and a personal friend of mine uh this is camille from cathaway uh semp looks at you uh, and do you want to roll the d20 or do you want me to, Camille? Uh, the dog really needs to go out, so I need you to. I will do that. <laughs> Semp is taken aback and actually changes her tone rather dramatically. Uh, she will point out, you know what, while she's do dealing with the dog, we'll go back to you, Zadar. So, Zadar, okay. uh, you have seen the Cardinal return, you have overheard things. Uh, burning or what did I call it? Flaming, flaming man. man. Flaming man is not going to go That's today. <laughs> Just in case there's a trademark infringement. Yeah. Uh, flaming man celebration is not going to go because of the rain. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you notice that the Druidic culture is headed towards mess hall with their holes. Okay. Um, if I'm not gleaning any other information or anything, the door like comes that. flying open and the oh. cardinal looks at you. What kinda, are you doing lurking here? Uh, I'm just waiting to hear word on my friend. You will be told when he is fit to speak. You should go now. Uh, you can tell that the cardinal uh, is <laughs> exceptionally tired. Uh, it looks like he has traveled nonstop to recover whatever the hell he brought back. It's just um, um, say to the colonel, you look exhausted. Do you want to get something to eat? No, thank you. I must go rest. Um, he heads towards the dormitory. Okay. Um, I'm not going to shadow him or anything like that. So I'll I'll head back to the mess hall. 
Uh, as you go in, sopping wet, uh, uh -huh. you notice there seems to be disturbance at the head of the table. Uh, you will get there uh, shortly after Camille is put back down. You notice that this simp person uh, is starting to speak with Camille and Zephyr uh, while ignoring Garignan, uh, uh -huh. who seems to be uh, having difficulty eating. Mm -hmm. uh, Camille, up at the head of the table, uh, Sent explains that she has heard a variety of stories uh, about uh, Professor Sneed's interactions with you and several of your friends, looks around and does not see any of them. Uh, I understand you arrived with the Minotaur? Yes, yes, we did. Uh, can you state the nature of your business as to why you are here? I know why the Minotaur are here. We have come in possession of an artifact that we believe needs to be protected from anyone coming in contact with it, and we were hoping that Mortimer could help us do that. What does it do? I don't remember. It, um, Zadar, at that, that point, comes walking up, kind of drying off with prestidigitation. <laughs> okay. Um, and I say, um, uh, Madam, yeah, if I may introduce myself, I am Zadar. I'm one of Mortimer's uh, friends. And if I heard what Camille, what they were talking about, then, you know, I say I'm might be able to shed some light on this situation. D12 against me? Okay. 11. Also 11. Ty goes to the runner. Uh, you will have caught just the last bits about Camille not remembering uh, what the box does. Okay. Well, I guess I infer. I said uh, <laughs> it emanates a pulsating light and it it renders anybody who's in contact with the beam of the light uh, feeble-minded. Hmm. Feeble-minded, you say. Dexter! <laughs> I said there was also other instances where this... Hey, bah, 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 bah. Uh, okay. The gnome comes waddling up. Uh, he's got oatmeal uh, in his facial hair. Uh, yes. Mistress Semp, what may I do for you? Uh, she takes one look at him. These individuals are in possession of an artifact. I would like for you to examine it until Professor Sneed feels better. Uh, I may interject. This is very dangerous. It's not just the people minded. This caused the cataclysm of Telosia. What is wrong with Telosia? Uh, where do I begin? <laughs> well, you left a fucking halfling to help in charge, be in charge there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. <laughs> They're kind of better. Um, yes. Uh, this pretty much. It caused a great uh, rift. Caused a cataclysm, uh, pretty much. And just about, yeah, destroyed. Uh, a large section of the continent of Telosia. Uh, where the Wemic live, you mean? Yes. I am familiar. Uh, Dakamel, are you familiar with that? Uh, Dexter? No, I am not. You'll be of no use to us. Go return to your meal. Uh, Semp uh, asks where this item is. I have it in my satchel right here. May I see it? I don't no. advise opening it. I cautiously <clears throat> Zephyr, present uh, it. <laughs> Zephyr kind of tugs on uh, Camille's robe. Um, if there is anyone smarter than Mortimer, it is Sam. Okay but she's not going to do anything stupid with it, is she? I whisper. I was going to say, say that I'm whispering loud. it. Uh, no, the mistress is very cautious. And we, oh, can really trust, we can trust her? Mortimer trusts her. Mm -hmm. 
and I I right. presented mistress I present this to you but I highly recommend it. she doesn't yeah. even reach for it she oh. just looks at it <clears throat> does she recognize the case or anything like that give me an insight okay oh. <laughs> right here uh okay insight uh 17. she knows something you can see something flash across her face uh and she looks over at grignon uh who kind of leans forward and takes a look at it give me an insight on reading his face uh you both can if you want uh nat 20. Six. Not a clue, Camille. Uh, Zadar with a nat 20. Uh, a look of horror crosses Gurignan's face. Uh-oh. Uh, and he looks over at Semp, and she looks at him. They do not speak. Uh, and she waves it off and says, yes, um, uh, Perhaps Professor Sneed would be your best bet on examining that. I would keep it in its case if I were you. Yes, uh, I agree. Thank you, Mistress. <clears throat> I and asked I her if she knows anything about it. In my satchel, you know. So uh, I know enough that Professor Sneed is probably who you will need to speak with on this matter. Uh, you may return to your seats. I need to finish my discussion with Zephyr and Grignan, please. I turn Thank to Zephyr mistress. and I say, can I talk to you later? Yes. Uh, after the meal, if Semp allows it, I will be able to speak with you. Awesome. We'll see you soon. And I am hungry. Damn it. Where's our food? <laughs> I got you a plate. God damn it. You're late. <laughs> It's back there. As you guys return to your seat, Richie looks a little bit apprehensive. Uh, he, of course, would never it's fine. deign to uh, interrupt fine. the discussion. Uh, you can tell that Semp is alternating between the two, trying to figure out presumably what the hell went wrong and what they were doing. Uh, after the meal, uh, Semp claps her hands and points to the Druidic group sitting at the back. Uh, apparently she does not want the mushrooms consumed inside. <laughs> Don't blame her. Uh, the meal ends. Uh, everybody gets up to head off to their general areas of study. Uh, is it still raining? <laughs> yeah, with gale force winds. Oh, uh, it it okay. is not good out there. As the general mess hall clears, Rignon and uh, Zephyr uh, bow to the mistress of the academy and uh, they head over to you. Uh, Zephyr introduces Professor Garignon. Uh, he looks young, uh, youthful face. He is also human. Um, but you know, you can you can tell, there might be a mile or two on him, but otherwise he looks rather young, maybe mid-20s. Uh, quite young to be a professor in your opinion. Is he a vampire? Uh, he is not a vampire, <laughs> although that is a good guess. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he he tends to remain silent, and Zephyr will do all the talking. Uh, my friends, how are you doing? What brings you here? Yada, yada, yada. General information. Uh -huh. uh, Pleasant trees. What do you guys do? You guys have any questions for her? Well, we fill her in, blah blah blah, and then I'm like, bring her up to speed, dude. You guys are old. You've obviously been doing too much time traveling, and what the fuck happened? Because Mortimer's almost dead, and blah. <laughs> We just came back from making peace with the elves. However, one faction of the wild elves 
was not in favor. The conclave came under attack. Uh, we were each wounded to a certain degree, and I am told uh, Mortimer was poisoned. Uh, but since I have left you guys, we have made many trips into the past because Mortimer is researching something. Uh, and it might have something to do with what the Minotaur have brought him. I'm not sure. Uh, but she explains that they have seen wondrous sights, uh, yes. saw the uh, Great Desert before it became the Great Desert. Uh, mm -hmm. They've been to Marokia. They've been uh, to the Elf Lands. Uh, they did not go to Telosia. <laughs> okay. Uh, they went to Freckland and uh, had a meeting with the Frost Giants. Uh, Freckland sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, the, the Freckland that she knows was populated heavily by Frost Giants, and mm -hmm. they were told to leave by Mortimer because of global warming. Okay. Well, that was um, nice of him. Yeah, that was nice. Uh, we've been to Utha, we've been to Osme, um, and we've been to a place called Sedelis. Um, he actually never heard of the place. He actually discovered that there was a great crevasse that separated North Sedelis and South Sedelis, and he uh, he showed him how to build a bridge. So, oh, well, I uh, mean. Uh... The, constru moment. the construction on that's going to be a very long-term project. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's not even completed yet. Uh, but we have been to many places, and uh, both Professor Garignan and I have warned him that uh, he is starting to look old, and he is starting to lose a step. Is it because of the time spent? in each era or is it just is it accelerated his aging Zephyr looks at Professor Grignon uh, and he points out that he believes the time space continuum is somehow aging him uh, the more he uses it uh, the faster he ages uh, time magic and in the last trip uh was really bad uh he believes that somehow if injured in the past greatly or grievously and brought back into the current timeline may or may not have played a part in it uh and he, he says i hope i'm not speaking out of turn i know he is your friend but it is my suggestion that he stop doing time travel well what about you two well, obviously will talk it to would have <laughs> It would have hurt you as well. Uh, Zephyr kind of <laughs> moves yep. her hair to the side uh, and points out that this last trip seemed to have aged both of them. Now, Garignan's injuries were not nearly as sub substantive as uh, Zephyr's. Because um, he's a vampire. Probably. <laughs> Named I, uh, Dolph. <laughs> Dolph, yeah. He is the Dolph, Dolph vampire. <laughs> uh, I I I turn to Professor uh, Garignan in kind of in a lower turn uh, tone. It's just like I, I kind of noticed the look on your face when I presented the case of the otter artifact. Yes, that thing is cursed. Uh, yeah. right. It's also something that Professor Sneed has been looking for. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, what have I been looking for? Oh the no! The familiar voice of Sneed is heard as he comes in with the assistance of a cane. Yay! Oh. <laughs> uh, he enters the building. Uh, so far, it's you four and Sneed. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, he enters in and goes, "Who has what I've been looking for?" Mortimer. My God, man! It's just like hey, it's uh, it's good to see you up. <laughs> well, I am still not one hundred percent 
Aole has said that I need several days rest, if not longer. Of course. Of Apparently, course. I have gotten something called lumbago. Lumbago. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, have you? I am glad to see you here. You guys, you have always been my true friends, and I appreciate that. I hope your journey was pleasant and fruitful. Well, it was a journey. <laughs> so, possibly fruitful. Um, we brought something with us. Well, I hope it's foodoo berries. <laughs> no, it's not that. But unfortunately, what I did, what I brought, what I did bring, uh, probably can wait until you are feeling much better. No time like the present, my friend. What do you have? Are you familiar with the Cataclysm of Telosia? Yes. I have the object that caused it. That was lost to time. And apparently it was found. It was in the Temple of the Curd. Hmm. I had not Power considered of the Curd. <clears throat> Let me see it, please. It was quite dangerous, Mortimer. This is extremely dangerous. I Ze Zephyr puts her hand it. over the satchel uh, and asks Mortimer if he's strong enough to handle this. My dear, I am I am well beyond my constitutional limits. I am fine. And Otherwise, Aole would not have let me go. Well, please I show me the item. I'll show you the item, but to examine it, I think we should adjourn to a more secure location. <laughs> Do you have a study we uh, could go to? Well, have you met Dexter? Yes. Yes, we have met Painfully, Dexter. yes. Let us go to Dexter's laboratory. Oh. All you 90s kids. Yes. Go. His uh, assistant Didi might be there. <laughs> yeah, Didi. Uh, uh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, uh, you missed out on something great. I did. Um, well, uh, okay. I mean, that'll be fine. But uh, do you feel up to this, man? I mean, I will take a look at it. I I will probably not mess with it, but I will take a look at it. Okay. So uh, he leads you outside the rain. Uh, looks over at Zephyr. Zephyr steps up, takes him by the offhand, and uh, they start to walk not to where Flaming Man is at, but over to the left. There seems to be a depression in the ground, uh, and you get about halfway there, and Captain Del Rio shows up. Uh -oh. uh, and he's kind of stomping away. His peg leg keeps getting caught in the wet uh, oh, ground. Oh, that sucks. Uh, and he goes, are you Sneed? Uh, all I can see is uh, Back to the Future too. Are you Marty McFly? Yeah. <laughs> Are you Sneed? Uh, Mortimer affirms, and he says, "I have a package uh, from Dibble Thibbet. Uh, I have dibbled it, so you need to sibble it." Uh, Mortimer just kind of from 1932. Yeah, the old West. <laughs> Talks in the old West. Uh, he, he says. Uh, Yes, that is me. Uh, he hands him a box. It is a wooden box, unadorned. It has a brass latch on it. Uh, there's no engravings, no markings, no nothing. Uh, thanks. Was <laughs> there a note? Uh, he is more intent on getting into Zadar's satchel. Uh, he goes, thank you. Uh, you will be compensated handsomely. Uh, but I am in the middle of something. I will come down to your ship. Uh, Captain Del Rio shrugs, <laughs> pops his peg leg out, and uh, <laughs> starts to head down the slope. Meanwhile, as you get closer, you notice that there are stones, car or uh, hewn stones uh, that form a bunker. Uh, there is an inclined door. Uh, Mortimer takes his cane, pat, pat, pat wraps on the metal door uh, a few hey, minutes he's later. He's taking a page out of my book. 
Uh, it creaks open, and there is Dexter Docamel. Uh, oh, Professor Sneed, it's good to see you upright. What may I do for you? Uh, he points out that he'd like to borrow the bunker. Uh, he has something he needs to examine, and he uh, considers it quite dangerous. Docamel ushers him in and is intensely curious. Uh, Professor Sneed does not send him away. Uh, and he kind of eases down the wooden steps into an area uh, very modernistic. Uh, the walls are hewn smooth. Uh, it's kind of shaped like a barbell. So there's a, a big main room, a small tunnel, and then another big main room. There is a large metal door on a, like a barn hinge that slides across, uh, leading in. The first room that you are in uh, appears to be somewhat of a study area. Uh, there are several acolytes in here because, of course, uh, Docamel is a professor uh, on loan, uh, and he sends them out into the rain. Uh, he then says the lab is free to use. Uh, Sneed says, we need to go to the back. <laughs> Uh, much. as you wish uh, he moves the metal sliding door there's a short tunnel uh, there's alcoves with small brass plates uh, storage maybe uh, and you get back into the back of the barbell and there's brimstone uh, fire damage uh there's an acrid electrical aroma in this oh, area. Oh, man. This sounds this is, like the bunkers that was in the Marines, man. We were throwing grenades. <laughs> this, this, this is somewhere where it's going to handle an explosion. Uh, there are pieces of a table here, uh, and uh, Professor Docamel quickly moves it around, gets it to where it's a flat surface. Uh, Zadar, he asks you to go ahead and present the satchel on the table. Okay. Is there I'll anything we can hide behind? Yeah. Uh, if, if you'd like, you can go through the metal door because it's, it's two metal sliding barn mm. doors in between ah. the tunnel of the barbell. Uh, he asks if everybody could leave the room. Uh, yes. Who does? And I caught him. I said, the beams of light will cause your mind to become feeble yes i'm as sharp as a tack oh god i hope you stay that way <laughs> so yeah camille and i exit the room <laughs> no i tell him i'm like really really we've seen this yeah uh, i trust I, your judgment i've experienced I I, it <laughs> i think i know what i'm doing uh zephyr comes back from the main room with a large tome Okay. And does she have to say anything to say? Hands the tome over to him. Uh, clearly, she is intimately familiar with this book. Uh, there is no title. There is no markings on the binder. I asked Zephyr, do you think this is okay? I'm worried. Oh, I trust Professor Sneed. I think he'll be fine. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> we'll exit the room. <laughs> Everybody exits the room, including uh, Docamel. Uh, a moment later, the first metal door uh, slides open. Uh, Mortimer uh, waves his finger for Zephyr to come over. He takes the time travel necklace off and puts it in her hand, takes a belt pouch, gives it to her, and then a small rectangular satchel. Uh, Just in case. <laughs> Door slides shut. Uh, there is a grating noise uh, that you didn't hear before. Some kind of grinding, kind of stone on stone. Uh, okay. Zadar, Camille D4. Zadar has shield prepared just in case. <laughs> wow, seriously? Out of all these, I don't have four out here. Do a D8 and cut it in half. Will that be cheating? No. <laughs> well, kind of. 
Oh, there's one. Did you make that dice bag? Oh, no. Frank got it for me for Christmas one year. Oh, okay. Did I? Okay. Yeah, she's yeah. made dice bags. Nice. I've made a lot of dice bags. Okay, and that is four. For four hours, a variety of sounds are heard. Uh, you, you're pretty sure you heard a sheep. You heard a screech. You heard some kind of screaming. Uh, there's consent, right? And, there, uh, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of banging and uh, strange noises. Uh, at one point in time in our three uh Dacamel goes over kind of tugs on the metal door uh, it is secured from the inside after four hours uh you hear the latch pop and the door move across um Mortimer? <laughs> Hello, are you a raging idiot? Just say something. You say you found this in the Tower of the Curd. Yes, you did. We actually met the curd. Pelosia has a curd again. That's mm -hmm. interesting. What's well, his they name? Do now. <laughs> it's a it's girl. her. <laughs> What's her name? Tigress. You know that uh, Telosia uh, has usually overwhelmingly had female rulers. Yes. And she, she is more oh. than capable. <clears throat> Does this box belong to you? No. No, well, it That's... belongs to the Telosians. What did they want you to do with it? to secure, secure it because it. <laughs> it's uh from what we know it's cursed yes <laughs> it is very dangerous Duh. highly dangerous we told you that <clears throat> um is there a reliquary or something here that you can secure this i do not think that is the safest choice i was wondering if they would be upset if it was destroyed mm, no i don't think they they would object at all I don't think they care if this ever comes back. What, uh, what, uh, and he waves Zephyr over. Yes, Professor, I, I will. Uh, and Zephyr leaves. Um, what are you guys doing right now? <laughs> We're standing here looking at you our, going, our, what the fuck? Our, our plans are kind of open right now, Mortimer, since we're stuck here. <laughs> well, I was wondering if you might be able to do me a favor because I am laid up for several weeks and I sadly will not be able to uh, enjoy the experience. But I was wondering if you guys might be able to do me a favor and do the Telosians a favor and do everyone in the basin a favor uh and uh take this someplace to have it destroyed and where is this place uh there is a small island not too far away uh maybe two hours uh maybe three hours uh and it has a volcano an active volcano and i believe if uh this item uh and it's back in the satchel uh, we're to be dropped into the lava pit, uh, the caldera, which is uh, in the center of a volcano. There's a spot where the lava forms. This is called the caldera. It's very hot. Mm, and he, he, he goes on a long dissertation. Uh, once you I'm guys... just happy that he's given a dissertation. <laughs> uh, once uh, you guys have had enough and... <sighs> Dexter Dacamel is getting rather impatient. Uh, he points out that he digresses, uh, but he feels that if this item, uh, along with the item from the Minotaur, could be um, dropped into the volcano, uh, it would solve a great deal of problems uh in the future so, if you guys were interested are there eagles that could take us there 
There are no eagles on this island. <laughs> okay. All right. Where, where is your airship? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, he had to leave. Aerosmith has left. You know, if, if, you, if he was still around, he could just fly you over the volcano and you could just drop it in. That would be a very easy solution. <laughs> a very oh. fast solution, too. Uh, that is unfortunate. How about your Aarakocra <laughs> people? Uh, they will not go near the volcano. It is cursed land of them. It's cursed to everybody, evidently. Um, but I think that if you could uh, do me a small, tiny favor uh, of depositing both of these items into the volcano, uh, lickety that seems split. like a big favor, not a small, tiny favor. Well, can you provide us with a magic item that would allow one of us to fly? No. I I mean, you can always climb to the lip of the volcano. Oh, that sounds like I fun. know. I was trying to make it easy. <laughs> if I could make it easy on you, I would. You know, I might be able to time travel. Oh, no. 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 Well, it would save no. us all a lot. No. Of time. No. You're, you're going to, like, expire. Uh, that's, that's an emphatic no. <laughs> Zephyr breathes a big sigh of audible relief. Yeah, because we don't want you boning anybody back there. Oh, there's nobody on the island. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Are there animals? Mm, I'm sure there is uh, uh, flora and fauna there. Well, then, yeah, we don't want that to happen either. But there's, it's not like it's a home to dragons. <laughs> wow. We've actually seen one. <laughs> really? I would like to hear that story more. Okay. Well, uh, we'll get but, to that. <laughs> uh, big or small, we are friends. I, I ask this favor, and if you do not want to do it, that's not a problem. Uh, graduation is due, and I can always send uh, some of the initiates over to handle the task. I, I, I do. I do not want to burden you. No, we can't send kids we'll, to do this. We'll, we'll take it, Mortimer. <laughs> I appreciate it's like Frodo. That. I will take it. <laughs> I will carry you, Mister Frodo. <laughs> I would go with you, but uh, Aole is. Uh, said no i can send zephyr if you'd like no no she doesn't need to be a part of <laughs> She's this been through enough Z zephyr <laughs> Perignon, uh he could go with i feel better if you went or if you stayed <laughs> i should probably stay i am not feeling very well all right. Uh, Doc says, I, I'm not going. <laughs> okay. The next the next voyage is the voyage home for me. Yeah, we didn't expect you to. Like my yeah. cousin Sam. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, he goes, I, I, but Mortimer's like, it's not a big deal. I, we can get you a ship over there. Like I said, it's a few hours. You go over, you climb the mountain, drop mm -hmm. it in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Okay, we've had enough experience to know that's not going to happen. So, but we'll take the we'll, we'll take, take it. The, the, we'll take the task. <laughs> but yeah, he opens up the box, and inside it is a jewel. Is this? safe that we're opening or <laughs> Mortimer or... yes just don't stare into it I, I will keep it in the box I have no plans into staring into any jewels thank you I've been there and I've seen that no <laughs> sure. uh, but yes I you know did Captain Del Rio uh, he might be able to take you over there it's not that far out of his way and I can offer him some gold and gems that should sa satiate his uh, need. Well, that would be helpful. Of course. So let's let's do that. Let's go up. Uh, Dacamel, thank you very much for the use of your laboratory. <laughs> uh, he's like, no problem. He calls the initiates back in. They get back to work. Uh, you guys are tromping across the quad. And it is now cloudy. Uh, the rain has stopped. Uh, you head down towards the Minotaur vessel, which is called uh, the Horned Demon, yes. uh, where 
uh, Daphne and her lover are probably still going. The two other horny, horny seriously, <laughs> hot and heavy. Uh, those guys are in love. Uh, Mortimer tosses a bag to uh, Captain Del Rio, uh, and he says, uh, "I have paid twice as much. Uh, one for the appreciation of uh, bringing the package from Dibble Thibbet." His delivery service is top notch. I was wondering if you might be able to take my two associates uh, <coughs> over to Ilsa di Cursone. Minotaur has no idea where that is. Uh, Mortimer uh, whips out a piece of parchment. It's an old piece of parchment stained with a variety of things uh, and says, you know, it's uh, due west. A uh, few hours, uh, they have a small, tiny task to complete uh, and then bring them back. Uh, the Minotaur is not sold, and Mortimer scoffs at him and he goes, Your grandfather Delmonico had the same issue, and you look a lot alike, only his peg leg was on the other side. Uh, this causes the Minotaur to bristle, and he goes, How do you know my grandfather? He's been dead a long time. Trust me, I knew your grandfather. It was a very long time ago. And Camille says, trust <laughs> me, he probably had sex with your grandmother. Nice. <laughs> uh, oh, well? Nice. Mortimer's persuasion. Very good. And uh, very low. Uh, 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 Captain Del Rio will acquiesce, uh, especially considering the weight of the gems. And Mortimer says, bring them back safely. I will double that. Aw, Mortimer, I didn't know you cared. I do care. You are my friends. Uh, unfortunately, this will put you there at nightfall. Is that okay with you, or would you rather take off at first light? Uh, probably first light. First light would probably be best. Day four. Let's see what the weather is. No. Come on. White clouds. Yes. Okay. That's fine. Uh, you guys uh, get your meal. Uh, mm -hmm. A separate meal has been packed uh, for you by Zephyr. Uh, she is there to see you off. Such uh, a sweet Pro girl. Professor Sneed is not feeling well. The toxin is still wreaking havoc with him, uh, as is Grignon. So only Zephyr is feeling mildly better uh she brings a box to you the size of a vegetable container uh inside is your satchel zadar uh inside is also the box Z or zephyr will go ahead and explain that to you uh she says that professor sneed says to just dump the whole thing into the lava pit <clears throat> easy peasy lemon squeezy uh, and then return. Yeah, we've heard that. Uh, Professor Del Rio, you know, he's getting paid, so he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. He, says, he says, if you're ready, let's go. Let's okay. kick this pig. The yep. screaming of the lovemaking sessions is getting oh, God, intense, really? uh, but in a few short hours, you guys arrive at the outline of this island just as Mortimer said. Wow. Uh, Captain Del Rio looks at it uh, and says there is a problem. Uh-oh. Which what is? is problem? <clears throat> I see your volcano mm -hmm. that you're supposed to go to, but on this side of the island, there's just a sheer cliff. And I can see the reef line there. I cannot land you here. I will have to find a suitable spot to land you elsewhere. Yeah, if you you could in a long boat. Yeah, do you want to try left or do you want to try right? I'll leave it up to you guys. Well, you decide. Mm -hmm. Left. Left it is. You sail for... 15 days. Three more hours. Nice. <laughs> uh, and you find yourself uh, at a small cove. Uh, you've gone 
three hours by sea, you are at the far end of the island. Uh, but Professor Del Rio says, I think I can land you here. Uh, but it will not be in our ship. We will send a long ship over uh, and it will be okay. That's fine. <laughs> you guys get into the ship. So you're looking about mid afternoon. Uh, as you do, the long ship heads off with two minotaurs, one in the front, one in the back, uh, grumbling about, I wonder if there's any food here, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they see uh, goats hopping across. This entire island is covered in high cliffs, uh, but there is a gap uh, where they uh, believe they can uh, get you in. Are there fainting goats? <laughs> If they're they screaming. Faint, they die. That's right. They're oh. screaming goats. <laughs> These goats run, uh, run and hop across the ledge with amazing dexterity. Uh, you can amazing. see the minotaurs doing. They're going, yeah. But that's good eating right I there. like those goats. Uh, and, uh, I, I, I'm on the same page, boys. <laughs> fortunately for you guys, uh, you have discovered uh, a small crack in the cliffs. And there is a small sandy beach that will allow you to go ahead and land the longboat. Uh, their performance roll is an 18. Uh, they guide their way through. Uh, they ask you how long you want them to wait. Till we come back. Uh, they stow the boat, drag it up. Uh, there are a lot of trees here. It's a hilly region. Uh, and they start to cut down, or they find a dead tree uh, and start to harvest wood. Uh, we will set camp here, maybe find something to eat. Mm -hmm. There's uh, plenty to eat on <laughs> those ledges, boys. <laughs> and we will wait for your return. Thank you. Uh, as you head across, uh, the first uh, 10, 15 minutes, are over uh, deciduous uh, hills. Uh, so uh, they aren't fruit trees, they're just elm, maple, things of that nature. And then it branches off into this big plain. Uh, directly ahead of you is the Smoking Mountain. Uh, and that is your destination point, but it is Vegas miles away. Uh. Yeah uh you anticipate being able to cross this open plain and there from there you see high grasses and that's where the elevation starts to move so the whole island is like this you guys are down here mount smoky is up here top of old smoky yeah huh? so it's going to take you more than a day okay all right well, yeah, I mean, a choice. <laughs> that's what we gotta do. Well, you guys only got enough food for one day. <laughs> so you like guys a couple a... days of starving isn't gonna hurt us. Yeah, weight loss. Uh, as you guys head across the plains, you notice a couple things. Uh, the land here is not bad. Uh, there's no snow. Uh, the high cliffs uh, kind of protect you from the winds, so it's it's not warm. Uh, but it is not cold. It's very temperate in this area uh, due to the environmental blockage. Uh, as the sun starts to go down, you reach the high grasslands. You have seen uh, several different pieces of fauna, uh, deer, some goats, rabbits, things of that nature. Uh, but as you start to get into the grasslands, you realize that uh, the sun is going to drop really quickly and you guys are going to need to make camp <clears throat> yeah okay i'll do that i have that was my new thing oh lord something something that's useful as shit is it a tiny hut? Uh, more something, the private 
something. Morning Canaan's private sanctum? Yes. Oh, very nice. You guys will be well protected here. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that what you want to set up? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fair oh, yeah. enough. Uh, off in the distance from whence you came, you can see a, a kind of a sizable bonfire. Of course, you're looking down at an angle, so you, know, mm -hmm. you can tell that the Minotaur have created something. Uh, whether or not they're going to wait the whole time, kind That's of a question of story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you guys, uh, you pop open Mordekagen's sanctum, uh, and you guys have a rather nice evening. Uh, the beginning of Thank day. Mm -hmm. The beginning of day two. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave that first light. Clear. Nice. 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 Nice day. However, as you emerge from the sanctum, you are not alone. Oh shit. Okay. And who is with us? It's an individual who looks a lot like Tom Hanks in Castaway. Uh, <laughs> he is a human. He's not very tall. He's maybe five seven. He's quite thin. He's quite tan, uh, and he's wearing what appears to be goat skin underwear. Uh, he's rather slimmed down, and he has a rather angry-looking spear with him. And he um, looks at both of you. You okay? No, I am not okay. I am a freaking castaway here. My ship wrecked on the far side. Well, Who are you and what are you doing here? Our ship is here and we can take you with us when we're done. You would do that for me? Well, of course. I wouldn't leave anyone wouldn't just to live here. To stay here. <laughs> Beauty and generous. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, his charisma is... Uh, 16, Camille. Oh. And he's uh, a little bit taller than you halflings. Uh, not bad. He's short. Uh, but he goes, uh, I appreciate that, my dear. Uh, it has been so long since I've gazed upon beauty such as yours. Uh, Zadar, he's pretty much ignoring your giant Pamela Anderson jugs. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Well, that's unusual. Uh, well, that art didn't offer a way to get home. Well, still, but jugs are jugs. And home is home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true. <laughs> Why are you here? Um, we have a quest we need to complete. And once that's done, we can all get the out of here. And an adventurous to boot. The gods have answered my prayers. Wow. He seems rather smitten with you, and he doesn't come across as cheesy, so he has better pickup lines than me. Um, <laughs> so what does your quest entail? We need to make it to the top of the volcano. Yeah. And drop some things in. Drop them. I'm Good. sorry? No. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. No. <laughs> I can walk with you if you'd like. That would be amazing. Yes, it would. Uh, I am Maurice, Maurice Lucinda. Uh, I lost most of my crew uh, when I was navigating this area. I had been here almost three months. I, too, am an adventurer uh, and pretty much know the lay of the land. And what was the name of your ship? Uh, the Merryweather. I'm sorry uh, we, for your loss. You are very sweet. I appreciate that. Uh, um, yes, he goes on as you guys walk. He explains the Merryweather uh, was a survey ship. He was on a survey mission uh, for the southern country of uh, Bestel. So uh, he, he's very gregarious. It's clear that he is lonely. It's been a long time. Uh, several months since he's had any human contact. I have not human. heard of Bestel. Uh, it is to the south and to the west. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, as a matter of fact, I can show you why you have never heard of it. Uh-oh. 
It's not here. <laughs> uh, you guys are up here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bestel is down here. The Grand Academy is there. Wow. And Sedellus is there. Okay. Freckland, Tol Tolsia. Okay. And Cacophony. Hmm. Uh, we are right a there. long way from home. Yep. yep. And a short time to get there. Uh, as he talks, he holds up his hand. Yes. Get down. Be quiet. Uh, as you're moving through the high grasslands, uh, you notice a slight breeze in the tops of the grasses undulate. However, you notice that some of the grasses are moving side to side. Mm. Uh, everybody roll initiative. Uh, sure. <laughs> oh, not 20. Oh, my lord. Uh, 12. 19. Not 20 again. Uh, so Maurice and an owlbear uh, leap at each other as it comes through the brush. Uh, and they attack. Uh, let me get the stats up here. Oh. Uh, you guys are familiar with these things. They are quite nasty. Uh, root beer will be uh, Maurice. Is he a space cowboy? He is not quite a space cowboy, and he does not successfully hit the owlbear, nor does the owlbear hit him with the bite. Or the claws. Three misses. 19. Wow. Camille, you're up. The owlbear looks rather ferocious. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, now I'm regretting my spell. Uh, I would not regret that spell at all. That was a wise choice. Uh, what? Which one was that? <laughs> oh, the uh, Morden Canaan? Yeah. It's always a good spell. So, where is everyone in regard to me? Uh, Maurice has stepped in front of you to protect his lady. <laughs> Zadar will be off to your side. Okay. Yeah, all of a sudden, uh, yeah, Maurice has got a lady <laughs> playing <Wow>. in his head. <laughs> okay. Uh... The disco generation's alive and well. How about magic missile? Sure. How much damage? Um, one d four per level, okay, I believe. Thank you. Yeah, one d four plus your yeah. One d four plus what? I I'm looking it up now. Yeah. We had Dewey Docamel here. It's just one right? d four plus okay. what? So. So it's three. How many are you going to send? All of them. Keep rolling. Oh. Are you doing it at first level? I guess. At first level, it's what? Three arrows? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, second level's four, and Zadar has that prepared because he's going to launch that next. Okay. So roll me three D4s and add the total, please. Yeah, D and D Beyond and... saying it's one D four plus one. So you know. nine. Yeah, for some reason it's not coming up on this one. So <laughs> not nine damage. Is that plus three? One for each? Mm-hmm. So nine damage. Zidar, you're up. Okay. Uh I launch uh magic missiles second level, so there's four. Mm -hmm. Uh let's see. That's uh Seven and um, oh, 11 points uh, on the total of the die, so plus four to that, so 15 points okay. of force damage. New round, uh, Maurice will attack. <clears throat> Bale, he's not very good at this. Uh, the owlbear. Uh, 
bite goes to one, two, three, four, five, six is Maurice. Four, Zadar, you're getting the bite. Oh. Claws, uh, Maurice. Okay. So, uh, Zadar's going to uncanny dodge and try to ha half it. Bite is the green. Uh, bite is a two, so it will miss you completely. The 16, however, is going to hit. And it's going to hit hard as Maurice yells. Ooh. Ouch. Uh, Maurice now has claw marks opening up his chest oh, and is geez. howling in pain. Uh, Camille, you're up. Uh... Oh, good lord. So, how many <coughs> people are we fighting against? Just the one. Just and the owl bear. Where is it in relation to me? Uh, since he got ripped open, uh, you have a clear view of this creature who is right in front of you. I do web. Uh, there is nothing to attach it to. Um, so then how about... Thunder wave. Thunder wave is good. I don't know what to do now. Uh, I think you have to hit, don't you? Or no, I have to dodge. Yeah. I, I get a save. Yeah. Uh, constitution check, I think. I... I dropped half my cards, so I'm not sure. I'll look it up. Thank you. I'm on it already. One action. 15 cube on a failed save, 2d8 thunder damage, and is pushed back 10 feet. Uh, but what's what's your save? Uh, that does not matter. That's a six. Uh, give me 2d8 damage, and I go back 10 feet. Seven. Every little bit helps. Zadar. Okay. Uh, Zadar, uh, since the <laughs> hell there was preoccupied, it's going to pop up and pop him with a uh, crossbow bolt. Sure. Okay. Uh, does he get a sneak attack on that too? Uh, no, he tried to attack you this round. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, all right. That might not have been the best move, but okay. Yeah, he knows exactly who you are because he tried to get you. Okay. Uh, 17 to hit. Easily. Okay. Uh, for um, nine points of piercing damage. Top of the order, uh, Maurice. Oh, leaps into action. There you go. He's using a shitty spear, though. For a murder elbow. That'll nice. help. Uh, but the owlbear goes bite. Four again. Uh, claw to Camille. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, the bite... 19 plus 7, 26 to hit. Pause. Nat 1, uh, Mrs. Camille. Uh, the bite is. I'm going to uncanny dodge to help half it. Yeah, because it's max. That's 15. It takes 7 hit points of damage Ouch. as That's it nice. latches onto you. Uh, Camille, when she gets back, is up. Uh, if you want to go ahead and go, we'll just return. Okay. You will, oh, Zadar to go? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Zadar is <laughs> definitely going to attack. Because you are uh, going to so. Uh, uh, flaming scimitar. <laughs> Green flame blade while, uh, striking with the scimitar. Okay. 
That is a 24 to hit. Yep. Uh, and that is that's, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's see. Uh, six points of slashing damage with uh, eight points of fire damage. And he's going to make his offhand attack with his dagger. Uh, does 11 hit? 11 does not hit. Okay, so Sadar misses. Uh, Camille, you're up. We hopped over you. Thank you. I had to go to the bathroom. You almost got clawed, but it natural one against you. Um, so I've got 19. That hits. What did I do last time? Uh, Thunder Wave. Thunder yes. Wave, yeah. Let's do that. Uh, you're going to use it, use it again? Yes. That's me rolling. Uh, that's a nat 20, so 1d8 damage. That's my third nat 20 of the night. Wow, damn, dude. <laughs> Get a Stardo. A Stardo! Five. That's pretty good. Uh, the Albert does not look good. It is the top of the order. Uh, Maurice gives another battle yell. Uh, with a five, he misses yet again. Uh, he blows. Uh, he's all <laughs> charmed. The bite goes to two. Uh, Camille, the claws go to five. Maurice. Oh, height. Uh, eight plus seven, 15 hit you, Camille? Yeah. Oh, Nelly. Oh, man. 10 again, plus five, 15 hit points oh. of damage. Uh, the claws. Oh, oh, 18 plus seven is 25. And Maurice, they call it a night. Early. Let him die. Yeah, oh, that's not bad. Uh, he's hurt. Camille, can you kill this thing? Um, we'll try. Fifteen hits. Can I do Thunder Wave again? Nope. Nope. You got Magic Missile? Yes. That'll do it. I do that. Sure. And I'll probably put the Albert down. So what do I have to do? 3d4 plus 3. Yeah, short of getting bare minimum, you'll put this thing down. Two, three. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, the the owlbear goes down. Okay. It is down for the count. Okay, owlbear uh, down. Uh, Zadar is gonna. Get uh, he, one of the few uh, potions of healing that he has, sure. and tend to Camille first. <laughs> uh, Maurice will tell you to tend to her first. Okay. The lovely lady needs help. Whatever. Give it so, to Maurice. Maurice will not take it. Do you have one? Or fine. Does she have one? No, she does not have one. Okay. Zadar had two, so <laughs> gives one uh, to Camille. 
D8 plus two, no ones, Camille. Five. Plus two? Seven. Seven. Yeah, seven hit points back. Uh, Maurice is pretty banged up, but he tells you ahead there are, are some bushes that have healing properties. Mm. Um, if if we can make it there, we can make it anywhere. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Okay. I, I help him up and help carry him. He I he's just got this huge gash opened up on his muscular chest. Uh but he puts on the brave face, leads you guys through the grasslands. Uh on the other side of the grasslands, the elevation's starting to get to you. Uh there is just this again wide swath of just normal grass and there's these colorful bushes uh with red hairy fruit on them uh he kind of limps up towards the one bush starts to tear off these uh berries and pops them into his mouth uh the gashes begin to close and heal. Well, uh, however, that's awesome. he, he is going to have some scarring. <sighs> <sighs> he moves over to the next bush, grabs another handful. For you, my dear. You are not fully healed, correct? No, but no. what about you? There are more bushes. By all means, here, please take a handful. Okay. Roll 2d4, add two, no ones. Because you are familiar with the Fudu Berry, are you not? I am not. Uh, this item has magical healing properties. I'm like, wait, Mortimer mentioned this. <laughs> uh, Maurice will tell you that they are very rare and they cannot be transplanted. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, how how do you look heal wise? Well, I got six points back. So how many are you down? I have no idea. Well, you got thirteen yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, you got... he, I he would probably, probably say that. I'm probably doing pretty good. Yeah, you're probably good. He will take uh, two more, and he is much better. Uh, whew. Whew. he's looking around uh, birds songbirds are chirping uh, plume of smoke coming up out of the volcano ah, we aren't far now uh, but it is about noon okay. on day two uh, how long the minotaur will stay is hard to say uh, um. How is it time-wise to get to the top of that volcano? Like it at looking... least another hour or two. An hour, okay. Uh, and Maurice is looking around. He says, this would be a really nice place to build a house. Okay. And with that, we'll call it a night. Uh, okay. <laughs> David, what'd you think? I liked it. I liked it. I was concerned about Mortimer. Oh my god! You gotta, uh, you gotta, you gotta have it there. We can, we can't, we can't lose our friend. Um, That's so, what D and yeah. all about. Yeah, it's friendship. Um, so yeah, no, I I enjoyed it. It's great, and need to see how this turns out because yeah. Zadar is climbing a volcano. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be easy. All you got to do is drop something in. Right. And you're no done. Eagles. That that always goes well. <laughs> easy, easy. Uh, and you got to meet uh, Dewey Dockamel's grandfather. Grandfather. Oh, oh okay. okay. I was thinking okay. it was going to be his dad. Yeah, and, that's and why and I uploaded the name Dewey to him. <laughs> and the niece's great, great, great. Yeah. Great grandfather, because Eric Cockrell don't live about long. Uh, yeah. And Aeoli, I'm told, is just like mayonnaise. <laughs> so, mayo, mayonnaise. 
Oh, <laughs> Nadiz uh, has found uh, his relative. Uh, Carrie, what'd you think? It was good. I'm still sad because I don't want to go away. Yeah, well, good things have to come in at an end. <laughs> Nothing is ever set in stone. Right. Maybe it just takes a break. But I'm just a baby uh, player, so there you go. That's true. And if you live through your first campaign, that's that says something. Uh, my first campaign ended at first level when I died. Uh, <laughs> that, that was a different genre so everybody fucking died mad folks this has been your hobo <laughs> inc uh the cacophony edition uh we hope you enjoyed it as much as our players did follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to shoot the shit about dnd uh join our discord uh, if you want to buy our cool crap like this neato shirt uh or other stuff uh it, the link is down there uh most importantly, if you want to join us on Saturday for a one shot or on Tuesdays for the talk show, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, hit us up. We will get you on there and you can have some fun as well. Don't forget Pirate Dog Dice for dice that really kicked the shit out of more eats today. Uh, they're available at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter, also on fishgames.com, uh, makers of Adventure Sense, the Shine System. Uh, how to RPG with your cat. Uh, and remember, if you're going to be at Gen Con and you know have an hour down or some free time, uh, they could use some booth help. Uh, so contact them at oddfishgames.com. Folks, we're all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc. We hope to see you on Saturday for the one shot. It is a dungeon delve, third oh. level. Uh, other than that, everybody wave goodbye and uh, blow them a kiss. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. That's it, folks.